to be the laundry and dry cleaning building at Camp Hovey. that this building to my right when uh, everything first started we first noticed the battery XO and I were uh, doing getting some OER information off of the computer when it, we noticed that the carpets were floating uh, we tried to get out the front door we couldn't had to climb out a window by then the water was chest deep uh, climbed over on onto this building that's right behind me stayed up there for four hours just watching everything float by saw uh, everything from connexes to full-size refrigerators, even this building to my left that's uh, off, moved off its foundation. Uh, the whole time we were just trying to find out a place to go as we saw the stuff going by. We, had, we ended up having connexes inside the motor pool bays. We had bay doors just totally damaged. We had uh, connexes that moved downstream probably about a half mile to a mile. We even have a couple trailers that we can't even find yet. One Connex, I believe, is still missing. Another maintenance day. Jeff's on the Nod Hunt 228-969938. I'm 14-series squad leader president working in the, the uh, operation NCO for Bravo Barry 55. Uh, the night of the flood, I was in uh, building 4320, which is my room, room 104, and uh, I was already asleep. I don't remember really remember the uh, correct time, but uh, my couch kept bumping up against my head, and I was thought I was dreaming, and I felt like I was telling my girl gone, and I woke up. My couch was floating beside my bed. My fan was underwater, still turning. I immediately got up and I said, well, I thought electric, I'd being electrocuted, so I stepped on the radiator and opened the window and the water was halfway above my window already. And uh, I immediately tried, I touched the water to see if there was any type of electrocution. Then I dove off to the water. When I opened my, opened my door, the water pushed me back to my window. Then I said to myself, which I can't swim and I am petrified by the water, that I got to get upstairs, that's the first thing I did. Immediately hitting the hallway, I looked to my left, which to the door that's coming from toward the river is, a tree came through the window. Of this is uh, Camp Hovey Park. It was, anyway, before the flood. Bags of water. That's how the Hovey got people to get their water. And one of the connexes. It looks like I hit a bridge or something. They pulled it out of the water. It's right now. As you can see, uh, there's a lot of destruction. The whole supply room has been flooded. We got about three feet inside of mud. Uh, not, non equipment has been saved or can be salvaged. Tell me how many days you got this is what the fourth day cleanup for you? They just say uh this is the supply room, this is the fourth day cleanup and it's the second brigade area. This is the fourth day of cleanup. Live room, as you can see, we have been going at it pretty, uh, pretty heavily. We will continue probably will take. Okay. So this is a second brigade area. And this was a basketball area. That's what I one. one of the connexes was moved over here.
Here's where Connex hit the side of a building. That's how powerful the water was and moved everything. Here's the entrance gate to Hobie. That hit really bad too. They cleaned a lot of this stuff up. So you can this is like four days after it happened. So they cleaned a lot up. And over there is where they where all the trash is and stuff they piled over there to get out of the roads and stuff. I mean this whole bridge right here was covered in the debris. They had to get a chainsaw just to cut through some of the stuff. It was like locked. This bridge is really bad. You can see where some of the stuff is still stuck to the side. Coverson, I'm part of the HHC 272 Medcon Metal Recon Platoon. Uh, stationed here in Camp Casey, Korea. As you can see, that we've lost all of our aid station. Uh, waters came through, unexploded ordnance. We continue with the cleanup. Uh, it's been a long process. We lost all our medical supplies, all our vaccines. Uh, the inside of the building is completely filled with, with mud. Uh, we continue our cleanup efforts. Uh, men are continuing to work hard and uh, retire, hunger. And uh, as you can see, back here is where our heating unit was and our cooling system. All of this was taken away by the waters. Uh, lost all our medical... This is Camp Casey, second tank. This is the headquarters building, second tank. And here's where the road is for the bridge. And it got totaled. August 98, uh, there was a flash flood that, uh, that decimated the areas of Camp Casey, Camp Hobie, Camp Oval, and Camp Nimble, which caused several problems uh, with medical care in the, in the uh, Camp Casey area. Uh, number one of those problems is that medical facilities, uh, especially one at Camp Hobie, were actually uh, actually damaged by the uh, by the flood and mudslides. <laughs> Camp Hobie uh, actually has. Uh, rather large tree limb uh, and tree stump that looks like it's about to go into the back of the uh, back of the, the, the dispensary. Uh, loss of power, uh, especially for Camp Hobie, was a problem because they had no ability to see uh, to see patients and, and to uh, they had to work by candlelight. And at the time, they had a, a critically injured uh, Korean Service Corps personnel who uh, then had a problem in medical evacuation in that there was no weather. Uh, for helicopters or dust off to, to operate, so we had to find a local hospital, which we have an agreement with, but the problem with that local hospital was that they were underwater. Uh, so we had to make an additional plans for evacuation to a, uh, an, another nearby civilian hospital. Uh, the potential for injuries is enormous uh, in floods, uh, especially with uh, the loss of uh, munitions that uh, has been reported. Uh, we now have uh, personnel going out on foot patrols to try to find hand grenades, L uh, AT4 rounds, uh, and uh, other associated munitions. So uh, it doesn't take much to pull a pin off of a, off of a hand grenade. All it takes is somebody to find a hand grenade and just trip it the right way and we'd have additional injuries. Those are, of course, catastrophic injuries, but then there's the everyday injuries of cleaning up. The personnel are uh, hurting their backs. Uh, by, by having to lift more than they're, they're prepared to. Uh, people are uh, at ex, ex, increased risk for developing uh, tetanus. So people who get a uh, cut here automatically get a tetanus booster, regardless of whether they need, uh, need that updated. Uh, as well as uh, you know, the other uh, problems that come along with a disaster, such as uh, uh, hepatitis, uh, you get rats out of the area.